Hello everyone, I'm Lore Master of Sotek, and welcome to the first episode of Lore in 10. This series is designed to introduce various pieces of lore from the Warhammer Fantasy universe in smaller 10 minute sized chunks to be better than my usual in-depth multi-hour videos. Today's focus will be about a popular subject, the Sinister Chaos Dwarves. So let's begin with who and what are they. Although they superficially resemble other dwarves in all important respects, such as height, impressive facial hair, and legendary stubbornness, the children of Hashet are easily distinguished by more than just their typically large hats. Chaos Dwarves often possess protruding tusks that lend them a brutal, savage expression, and most are gray flesh with red eyes. Many have small horns jutting from their foreheads, while some even have more bizarre mutations such as cloven hooves, though these more extreme cases are rare except among the sorcerers who have direct contact with the stuff of chaos. Due to their fairly low population, every Dawi Zar is extremely well armed and armored, with the most potent equipment to be found in the East. What truly makes them special, however, is their unique stance on domination as a chaos-worshipping race. Unlike other chaos factions who seek to rapidly expand, consume, or destroy, the Dawi Zar instead settle for a cold and slow expansion that gradually grounds all resistance into dust. They often travel the dark lands searching for fresh slaves and raw materials to fuel their industrious empire, but sometimes they will venture further out for extreme circumstances. Now that we have more of an idea of who we're talking about, let's look at their history. Long ago, thousands of years before the rise of men, when the ancestor gods still walked among the dwarves themselves, the dwarven race were building their empire by following the world's edge mountains north from what is now known as the Southlands. Eventually, this expansion led them to discover an immense plateau where the dusty ground was littered with wind-scoured bones of ancient creatures. Fittingly, the Dawi named it Zorn Uzkul, meaning the Great Skull Land. Although the mineral wealth of this land was rich, the earth and stone seemed tainted and unclean by some sinister force. Most of the dwarves claimed the land was cursed and turned aside from it, falling back to more established holds or venturing north into Norska. Some even headed further southeast, trying to strike out an empire towards the mountains of Morn. However, not all completely turned away. The most stubborn of their race decided to go into Zorn Uzkul and build their own home, a great hold that could mine from the wealth of this land and it started to build into a half-decent empire. But then tragedy struck. One day, seemingly out of nowhere, great explosions opened up at the north and southern poles of the world and a horrible tide of chaos was unleashed. The demons had come. Chaos was born into the world into a massing, raging storm of insanity and hatred, and it warped and slaughtered everything it came into contact with. Due to how far east they were from the rest of the Dwarven Empire and having no mountains to connect them, those in the Great Skull Land were completely cut off from the west during the Great Incursion. They were not destroyed by Chaos because they were too stubborn to die, hiding behind their runic walls, their shields and axes, and refusing to give out. However, they had been forsaken in their views by their ancestor gods, and as far as they knew were the last of their kind, completely abandoned, hiding in the dark, being hunted by animals. So they called out, pleading for something to answer, for something to give them the strength to survive. And something answered. This leads us, of course, to one of the most important aspects when it comes to the Chaos Dwarfs, and that's their rather unique religion. See, the Chaos Dwarves, unlike most of the other Chaos races, do not worship a major power, being Zinch, Korn, Nurgle, and Slanesh, nor do they worship a god that was born alongside them, such as the Great Horned Rat. Instead, during that dark and terrible time, they cried out into the darkness and something answered. And that something was a creature, or a demon, or something horrible that called itself Hashet. As far as known now, Hashet is not actually related to one of the great, greater four powers. He is a separate entity. Many scholars debate whether or not he's actually even part of the Chaos Pantheon, as Chaos does have many lesser gods within it, various demon princes and such masquerading as greater powers, or if they were something like the Great Horned Rat who seemed to have been born into existence by his very creations. Hashet 
is more strongly believed due to the fragmented uh, records the Chaos Dwarves have kept as something other, something more eldritch and ancient that slipped through the barrier when the Chaos Portals were ripped open in the initial Great Incursion. As for what he represents in the modern age, Hashet is the god of tyranny, greed, fire, and hatred. He offered salvation to the to the dwarves of Zorn Uzkul, but he told them he would give them power at a terrible cost. And they agreed to this bargain. He requires mass sacrifices on a constant basis, fresh blood and souls being eternally fed to his great runic fires found in the Chaos Dwarf capital of Tsar Nagrund. In return for their placation, however, Hashet taught the Chaos Dwarf sorcery and how to control the flames kept deep beneath the earth. From him, they learned how to fuse sorcery with forgecraft, using the rune magic the ancestor gods had taught them and corrupting it to create something far more deadly and sinister, including demon-fused machineries and monstrous engines of war. Hashet was the one that taught them how to bind demons, and how to use blood magic and sacrifice to make their creations even more sinister and deadly. The other price that came with Hashet's worship was that some of the dwarves at birth were mutated into these horrible abominations known as Chaos Dwarf Bull Centaurs. Of course, being an amalgamation of large bull creatures with the upper bodies of Chaos Dwarfs, similar to Centigors. These creatures are incredibly dangerous, incredibly powerful, and very prone to very nasty mutations. They're rare, often because their mothers die agonizing deaths at birth trying to give life to such a creature, but they are in high demand because their loyalty to the sorcerer lords of the Chaos Dwarves is unquestioning, and they are the most powerful tools that Hashid has often given the Chaos Dwarves. So the sorcerers have unfortunately begun to experiment using machines, twisted rune magic, and demonic sorcery to try and either force dwarf women to give birth to these creatures, or to take dwar chaos dwarven infants and using machinery force their bodies to grow into horrifying shapes that more closely resemble bull centaurs. However, none can deny their effectiveness upon the battlefield. As to where the Dawizar can be found, their entire civilization is contained to the east of the World's Edge Mountains in a great, essentially ash-barren wasteland known as the Darklands. The very, very northern parts of the Darklands are what are known to the dwarves as Zorn Uzkul, but they have of course expanded south beyond that. Uh, as far as their actual cities are concerned, up in the north in the center of Zorn Uzkul is their capital, Mingol Zar Nagrund, which means the city of fire and desolation. They also, it is surrounded by a series of volcanic plains which they have mined to the point that it's just this corrupted, toxic, magma-filled hell pit, and those are known as the volcanic plains of Zarduk. They do have numerous fortresses, or fortresses around the Darklands as well. There's the Black Fortress to the south, the Tower of Gorgoth, and then there's the mysterious Uzgulak. The Place of the Skull, which is in the very northern part. The Place of the Skull is the original Karak from before the Time of Chaos, and it's where the Chaos Dwarves struck their bargain with Hashet. It's fairly unassuming from the outside due to various tricks of sorcery and design, but contained within it is a heavily fortified inner city of complete mystery. Not even the Chaos Dwarves dare venture into its depths, and the greatest punishment for their race is to be sealed within and left there to die. This empire is of course fairly small, but it's very heavily controlled with an iron fist and woe be to any who seek to pass through it, let alone lay siege to it. One of the last but most important things to talk about with the Chaos Dwarves is of course their many horrible creations. The Chaos Dwarf Demonsmiths and Sorcerers are all incredibly inventive creatures possessing all of the intellect of the Dwarves, but none of the caution or 
slowness to develop new ideas, and they use very extreme methods to create all sorts of horrible abominations. These include, of course, the things like their war machines, such as the Dreadquake Mortars, which can shatter entire castles, magma cannons, which vomit forth great gouts of lava, Death Shrieker rockets, and one of their most horrible creations, the Iron Demon, which is essentially a giant horrifying train that drags a series of war machines behind it and it has the capability of just plowing through literally anything in its way and of course has a demon's very essence contained within. They're also the creators of the infamous Hell Cannons which are used frequently by the Warriors of Chaos. Great machines that have demons bound within their frame are fed the corpses of those who have died and use those who have fallen souls as fuel to fire out great gouts of burning soul fire to destroy everything they touch. Outside of that, they've created entire new races such as the Kadai Fireborn. Kadai are these horrific creatures born purely of flame that are designed to be the perfect soldiers. They're utterly loyal, they never tire, and they're made of flame so most weapons can't even hurt them, passing right through them and leaving no effect. They're horribly dangerous upon the battlefield, but thankfully for all other races, the Kadai are incredibly difficult to create and even harder to control. The Chaos Dwarves often having to put out their flames and transfer them as simple iron pieces that when awakened will roar into giant flaming monsters to fight upon the battlefield. There are of course even greater more powerful versions known as Kadai Destroyers which are huge colossi capable of smashing through castle walls and taking on the likes of dragons with ease. However, not all of their inventions have necessarily gone to plan, of course. The Chaos Dwarves did infamously create the Black Orcs in an attempt to make the perfect slave, and that ended up causing a rebellion that was so bad that the Chaos Dwarves were besieged everywhere, including their own capital, by a massive Orc and Goblin slave rebellion. And had it not been for the betrayal of the Hobgoblins, the Orcs would have succeeded in wiping out the Chaos Dwarves. But the Hobgoblins, in a moment of greed, betrayed all of their other green-skinned kin and decided to side with the Chaos Dwarves instead, which resulted in all of the Black Orcs being pushed out and shoved to retreat to the Mountains of Morn or to the World's Edge Mountains, which caused all sorts of horrible conflicts. That actually led to the first great battle of Blackfire Pass uh, through that act. The last thing we're going to talk about with the Chaos Dwarves is notable ones who you may see as important characters in the future. These of course will be covered more in depth in future videos, but for now I'm just going to drop their names so that you can look them up. You have the Lord of the Black Fortress in the South, Drazhoath the Ashen, Lord of Exiles, who made a notable participation in the very infamous Throne of Tarmacon. A uh, series which detailed the invasion of a terrifying Chaos Lord of Nurgle that ended with his death when he attacked the city of Nuln. And then there's, of course, the big scary lord of all the Chaos Dwarves as far as how well... He's not their king per se, but he controls the most influence and the most power due to his incredible age and magical strength, which is the lord of Zarnagrund Astrogoth Ironhand who is so ancient at this point that his body is mostly made of stone and machine, and he was actually the master of Drashoath the Ashen. Because, unfortunately for the Chaos Dwarves, their sorcerers using magic is anathema to dwarves themselves, so the more magic they use, should they, they lose control of it, it literally turns their body completely to stone. They say if you go to the city of Zarnagrund and walk its great plazas, many of the statues that line it are famous sorcerers who were so consumed by their magic that they turned completely to stone and now serve as a warning and a point of pride for the other Chaos Dwarves. And that will do it for now. I hope that whets your appetite about the Chaos Dwarves. If you haven't heard already, we are doing a Q&A series on them that will be coming up shortly. Feel free to leave questions that I may not have answered or piqued your interest about about the Chaos Dwarves in either the comment section below, on my Discord channel, or tweeted to my Twitter account, both of which I'll leave links to down below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again next time. Have a good one. Bye.